branches and the drums and the parade. But, but this, I thought it would be different than this. That phrase and variations of that phrase are words that I've heard so many times as a pastor. So many times in pastoral counseling or even one-on-one, -on -one, talking to someone that seems frustrated, seems down, things aren't going right. And, and, I, and I, I hear them say things like this. I thought things would be different than this. Think about that for a moment. And if you've ever had those times in your life, I thought things would be different than this. I thought things would be different. I thought that my spouse would change once we got married. Huh? And you know, uh, yeah, we kind of chuckle at that because those of us that are married are like, right. <laughs> I'm serious now. I'm serious now. For some people, that's the, what they voice. I thought things would be different than this. I thought that my spouse would change once we got married. Or I thought that he would keep bringing me flowers and getting me candy and paying attention to me once we got married. I thought things would be different than this. Or I thought my job would be different than it is. I thought it would be different than this. Or I thought finally getting out of the house and going to college and being on my own, I thought it would be different than this. I thought maybe when we had children, maybe that would change our marriage. And variations of the theme. The point is this phrase, the variations of it. I thought things would be different than this. I thought things would go this way. But instead, they went this way. This is a common part. It's a common thing for us. I believe it's part of our reality. It's part of our living. It's part of our, our world. All of us in this room have had those moments. I'm sure of it. We've had those moments of dealing with disappointment. That's what I'm talking about. I thought things would be different than this. And they're not that way. And I'm disappointed. We've, we've spent time during the Lenten season wrestling with some big, broad, brushstroke ideas. We've wrestled with big ideas as we talked about Joseph being thrown in the pit and, and, and uh, you know, saying, God, God turned this to good. We've wrestled with Job. We've wrestled with Jonah. We wrestled with the big ideas of where is God? Where is God in the midst of tragedy? Where is God... Where is God in the midst of devastation? Where is God when bad things happen to faithful people? We've wrestled with those big, broad brushstrokes. But this week I realized that fortunately, fortunately, we don't have to deal with tragedy and devastation every single week or even every other, other month. Amen? You with me? Yeah. But I'll tell you what I know that we do deal with as God's people and as real people is that if not daily and if not weekly, fairly common, we do deal with disappointment in our lives. We deal with disappointment. We deal with times of feeling frustrated, times of feeling depressed, because we thought things were going to be one way and they ended up being another way. That's our reality. We all know about those times when we've been disappointed in a spouse, in a child, grandchild. We know about those times when we felt real disappointment in a leader or, or in a, a co-worker. When we have felt real disappointment with something like our health. I've listened to many people talk about how they feel like their body let them down. That's disappointment. I've listened to people talk about disappointment with their job, or with school, with college, disappointment with their parents, disappointment with a coworker, disappointment when they go on vacation, disappointment when they retire and they don't know what to do with themselves, disappointment with a new gadget, disappointment, disappointment, even with God. That's what we're talking about. Now, are you all with me? That's what we're talking about, disappointment. Dealing with disappointment. Disappointment is a reality in our lives. Jesus said, what is, it, what is it profit if you gain everything? If you gain all the stuff and gadgets and signs of material wealth, what if you gain popularity and power and authority? If you gain all of those things and yet, and yet are spiritually bankrupt, what have you gained? Nothing. 
we know about disappointment. And that's why it's worth talking about. I thought things would be different than this. Some of us in this room have gotten there, maybe even lower down than others at other times, of, of really, if not voicing it out loud, saying it in our mind in, in kind of that dark pit, that dark place, or that desert place where it seems like there's no life, no water. I thought things would be different than this. And what goes along with that is that sense of, what do I do now? I thought things would be different. And when we say that, when, when you say that, when I say that, what carries, what's carried in that is sadness and a sense of frustration. Yes, maybe a sense of anger, a sense of depression, a broken heart, right? I thought things would go one way, they went another way. I thought things would be different than this. The confusion, the frustration. Why? Because if we dig a little bit deeper, it's about having hopes and dreams. Being optimistic in an outcome, being hopeful and optimistic that things would go a certain way, and then when we, we find out it doesn't go that way, it's disappointment. Disappointment is a reality of living in this world. Now here's where we turn the first corner. The question is, what do we do about it? The question is, what do we, as people who, who claim they're Christians, who, or who are curious about claiming that name and that title and that description, what do we do about this reality in our lives? Maybe it's not that big a thing, and maybe I'm, I'm seeing things from a different view because I'm a pastor and deal with people, and when they're struggling, struggling with disappointment, maybe you don't see it, but I see it, and there's probably at least 10 people in this room that get this. What do you think? Disappointment is real. It disrupts our lives and causes us to act or not act a certain way. So how do you deal with disappointment is the more specific question I'm asking today. How do you deal with disappointments in your life? How do you deal with them? Now, I mentioned to you before that I think we should feel a kindred spirit with the people a long time ago on that parade route. We should feel a commonality, however we want to describe that, with the people, the crowd, who gathered there that day, you know? Because they were soon to be disappointed. They turned out for the parade and waved the palm branches and they were smiling, happy people. They were so excited, the crowd, thinking things were going to be one way. And the crowd, as well as the people that were close to Jesus, they weren't expecting six days later this. I can imagine that they stood watching that next parade, that parade from the from the being arrested to the jail cell to being beaten to up the hill to Golgotha to where they did executions. I can imagine that parade route, people standing there saying this. Does that make sense? I thought things would be different than this. We thought he was the king. We thought he was a leader. We thought he was going to change life. We thought he was a savior. We thought he was a messiah. How disappointing could it be to see this man on the cross, bloody and broken and dying? My goodness. Disappointment. That's where I think, I believe, many of us find a kinship. Find a kinship. In having expectations. And then being disappointed, I thought things would be different. I thought things would go a different way. That's where those folks were. And again, I think that's where we can be. Disappointment. It's about hurt and frustration and confusion and all that comes with it. It's about darkness. And again, I go back to that point that I say this is real from having to try and love people and care for people and listen to people pray with people who if you boil it down they're disappointed because they thought things would be one way and it turned out another way in dealing with people and maybe you do the same in your job dealing with people because maybe they're angry or maybe they're hateful or, or whatever because of disappointment deal with disappointment so we had that question what do we do about that what do we where do we go with that how do we respond because disappointments are real I think about these palm branches. I think about 